Hey, hey, and welcome back to another video of learning Java 2D game programming. So in the last video, we added a wander state to our MPC. So right now he stands for three seconds, picks a random location and wanders off to it. And when he reaches it, he stands for three seconds and then he picks another position and then it just goes over and over and over. But so for this video, I think that it's time that we start looking at rendering optimizations. So let's do that. First, go into your game and game loop because we want to be able to see exactly what impact our optimizations are having. So currently you can only see 60 because we've capped it, but um, let's just let it loose. Now it will render as many times as it can and you can see it's rendering quite a lot of times, but that's because we don't have a whole lot to render. Let's give it a whole lot to render. So go into your game state and we want to move some things around. So first of all, make a method called initialize NPCs from within initialize characters. Generate this method. And I just changed my mind. I want this to take in how many NPCs you want. So number of NPCs. Okay, let's just start by moving this code, cut that out, paste it in here. Let's clean up here a little bit. So get rid of this NPC. Apparently Siri thought that I was talking to her. I'm just gonna sh shut it off. All right, so just stand. And let's focus on it, the player again. So now we need a for loop. Right, then inside of this for loop, so shift alt move with the uh, arrow keys. And let's first say game objects add NPC. And we don't want the NPC to get all these, we don't want all NPCs to get the same position that we set, but now we have this very handy get random position, which we can use and will. So if we just Hit play again right after I just clean up some imports. All right, press play. And we need to get rid of this spammy thing. So go to AI and AI manager and get rid of this because we've tested it now and know that it works. All right, so play again. All right, now we have 100 NPCs in our level. Our level is, of course, a lot larger than this screen, which is why we can't see them all. Um, and you can see here at my frames per second that it's hovering around. It's very unstable, but <laughs> it's it's apparently around 100-ish, 78, 74. All right, let's just stress it a little bit more. So I'm just gonna do 200 NPCs here. See what that looks like. Now we have 200 NPCs in our level. And so 38, 48, 48, 47, 50. All right, so I'm gonna say around, around 50-ish is where I'm at. So what's happening right now is that we're rendering everything in our level, no matter if it ends up on the screen or not. And this is something that um, Patrick Schwenk, a user, uh, commented on the camera video. So what he suggested is what we're going to do. We are going to, at the point of rendering, we're going to check if it's inside of our screen. And if it's inside of our screen, we're going to render it. Otherwise, we're not going to do it. So let's do that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is head over to our renderer. So here is where we render our objects. Let's start with our game objects. So here's where we get them currently. This is all of our game objects and for each we're drawing it. But we wanna step in between. We wanna filter out the ones that we're supposed to draw. So first of all, let's call stream on that collection, which is an API and if you haven't used it, um, it's an API for collections that gives you a lot of different uh, methods that you can use that are very handy and we're going to use filter. So in this filter, we're going to say game objects and actually we're going to ask the camera. So camera, uh, 
is visible maybe? No, that sounds like if it's hidden or not. Is in view. Yeah, let's call it that. Is in view and pass in the game object. Of course, we haven't made this yet, so we need to make it. And by the way, the filter, it just needs um, a statement that will return true or false. So if it's true, it will still be in our stream when we get here. But the stream isn't going to change our uh, original game objects. So let's create this method inside of camera. All right, and what do we need to know here? Well, our camera needs something. Let's give it a rectangle and call it view bounds and import that rectangle, which is part of the ABT, AWT package. We've used it in the first tutorials. It has some nifty things that we're gonna use, intersects. All right, but first we need to calculate this. So calculate, ooh, calculate view bounce. Let's generate this. All right, so the rect, sorry, the view bounce is a new rectangle. And so this rectangle will take an X, a Y, a width, and a height. And luckily we have all of those. So position get X, position get Y, um, window size get width, and window size get height. And obviously these take int, so let's just use the int X and the int Y methods that we have. All right. We also need to calculate this at every update in case we move and follow something. So let's just do it here. If we follow something, we have moved. Maybe we'll do it outside in case we... No, let's do it inside for now and we'll fix it if we need to. So, uh, calculate view bounds. That means that here we have this view bounds and we can call intersects. And currently we don't have any rectangle object in our game objects. Uh, in the future, when we do collision handling and introduce collision boxes, we're gonna make use of this rectangle, but we're not there yet. So for now, we just give it the game object's position and size. So game object, get position, uh, oh, and it was int x. Game object, get position, int y. Game object, get size, get width, and game object, get size, get height. All right, so this should work. Um, it will now answer if our view bounds in any way intersects this game object. Um, well, bounds, because that's basically what we're calculating here. All right, so let's try that out. And before we were around 50, sometimes under 40 to 50 ish. So let's try that. And look at that. Look at the difference. I was almost at 200 and then it dropped a little, but from 40 to 50 ish to now like 170 to 190 ish. So that's a huge performance boost. We should never render things that we cannot see. It's very unnecessary. And now, of course, it will be even more um, varied depending on how many NPCs or how many objects are, are at the screen at the same time. All right, but we didn't do this for the map. We only did this for our game objects. So we need to do it for the map. I'm just going to check how much time I've used, and I've used eight, almost nine minutes. Mm, should we do the map as well, or should we leave it like this? Let's do the map as well. So let's try to be swift. So if we just go to the renderer first, so you can see over here, we say that we start at X zero and go for the entire length of the tiles when we draw these images. And we don't want to do that. We want to start at some starting point and end at some ending point, which is within our view bounds. So let's just get a position start and we get that from the game map. So actually, let's uh, let's fix this. Uh, let's put a game map here instead. Map. And import that. Sorry. Import. And we don't get the tiles. We get the map. Now we can ask the map. So let's say get viewable uh, grid start 
shifting grid position. Oh, that's long, but we can fix it later. It needs to take in the camera as well. Um, and, and, and in the same way, make an ending position. Hmm. We probably want to do something about this later, but I don't want this video to be too long and I feel like it's going to be almost 20 minutes again. Maybe that's not a problem. I feel like, I don't know. Uh, anyway, in order to know what is the viewable starting grid position, we need, let's first return a new position. So for the X, we get the camera, get position, get X, and divide that by game sprite size. So let's do the same for the Y. Sprite size. All right, and that should be that for that. <laughs> And then let's go back to the renderer and create the other method, which is for the ending. And new position is what we want. And of course here, we want to start at the same position. So we could of course call this first, but I will not. And you will see um, in a moment, you will see why. So we start here, but we also need to add the width of the camera. So get size, which did not exist, get width, and divide that by game.sprite size, and let's create that. So Alt Enter and create, sorry, this should not give up game map. Why? Just, it should return size, of course. And this is window size. Maybe we should rename it. Let's not do that now. Let's do the same for the Y. So every X is a Y and every width is a height. All right, and so no comma there. So this should now be fine. We just need to use it. So X starts at start, get X. And in text, of course, start in text. And X keeps going until end in text. And the same for Y. Start in Y and end int y all right uh, and not length of course all right and now we don't have tiles but we do have maps so we can just fetch it from our map and that should work now if we take a look at this you can see that we see some black area here and when we move there's a black area up here and the reason for this is that it only renders the things that, for example, it wants the um, position to be in view, of course. And so the position is always the upper left corner because uh, that's where it starts drawing from. So this is the position, which means that the exact position for this tile is off of our screen, which means it doesn't get rendered. So the way that we usually fix this is we render maybe one or two tiles before. So we're sure that um, our graphics are there when we need it. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to add some safety space. So let's do that. And we do it inside of our game map. So for now, let's just make a private static final and call it like proximity. No. Let's call it safety, safety space. Hmm. Let's just call it safety space and we can always change it later. That's the amazing thing. So thing about programming in IDEs, you can always refactor it. So we want to add like here, we want to start rendering um, safety space before. The only problem now is what happens if we were at one here? If our grid position was one and we take away two, then we're at minus one. And this is going to be used inside of an array. So it's going to look for an index of minus one. So we're going to get an index out of bounds. And so the way we fix this is, of course, we say math max. Oh, sorry, I took away stuff. <clears throat> All right, math max, and then you say zero. So if you haven't used this before, it just gets 
uh, it takes two numbers and it gets the largest of them. So if this would be minus one, we'd get a zero. So do the same for the this one. Oh, sorry. I, 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 no, no, I'm fine. Yeah, just forgot the zero. So zero there and then minus uh, safety space. And we can say this since um, this always gets calculated first. The, I don't know what it's called in English. The, oh, you know what I mean. The ordering rule, ah, whatever. Now we need to do it down here as well for the ending, but then we all we say min. So the min is tiles.length or this, but now we want to do and we want to add the safety space. All right, so let's do it down here as well. Math.min, and we need to look inside one of the rows, and then we do the camera, blah, 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 and then safety space. So this became a little long. It is sad. Why is it sad? Because I forgot to say length. Okay, so that should be good. Let's try it out. And it is looking okay. So we didn't really get so much of performance gain from the tiles because we don't have that many tiles, but that is okay. I actually have one more optimization that I would like to do, but this video is already quite long, so I will wait with that until the next video. So thank you for watching. Hey, do